it's it's very simple actually i say there are there are good charges and bad charges we are no longer going to allow the ocean the ocean carriers and the ports to push off costs of port inefficiencies to shippers truckers uh, intermediaries and so you'll have to make a determination on whether or not it's reasonable under the shipping act to impose those fees the rule laid out lots of situations that would be considered part of reasonableness my favorite as I say, we never never let a good idea go. Originally, in our our innovation teams discussions in 2016, 2017, our shippers told us, so what what pieces of knowledge would be most effective in harmonizing our supply? And Shipper said, all we want to know is when it's ready to pick up. Is it available? And so in the demerge and detention rule, and I said, if you, if you send out a notice of availability and you stick to it, then you're reasonable. <laughs> um, that's not the whole story, but that, that one approach would so improve efficiency on the demerge side that um, uh, we 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 think you could add a little bit on the what we, we call the the charges for use of the the land demurrage and the the charges for the use of the equipment or the container the detention right so very simply idea is if a shipper presents at a port and, and he or she has done every single thing he's supposed to do. You paid your freight, you've complied with what is customarily necessary in the port, you're, you're there within three days, and you can't get it, you don't pay anything. Now, if um, the, the inverse of that is that if the trucker returns a con an empty container, within the time allotted and he is prevented by congestion or other or, or other occurrences from returning it he doesn't pay because you we we're not going to allow our ports to charge off the consequences of congestion my answer to that is fix the problems I, well, I'll help you. I'll assemble a team. We'll have industry leaders from around the country come together and we'll search for workable solutions, fix the problems, rather than charging the, the port users charges uh, in situations in which they can't, they, they are powerless. To, to fix the problems. Mm -hmm. Now, because this pandemic has, has over has the, the cargo uh, influx from the pandemic has, has so overwhelmed the system, um, then we, um, we didn't really hear until um, probably September, October, that many businesses were, were being overwhelmed with demerge and detention charges. And of course I said, no, no, I can't really. The rule was published in May. And so a large part of my current investigation uh, is to uh, investigate uh, whether or not there is compliance with the, the statutory requirement in the Shipping Act for common carriers to establish observe and enforce 
just and reasonable regulations and policies. And I can I can recite that now in my sleep. Well, that, that's it. Because that's that's um, that is the basic statutory requirement, and we have given our carriers and ports lots of freedom to assemble their own practices that the FMC would believe are reasonable under the law. Um, for example, um, I, I don't often cite ocean carriers, but I just heard that Habak Lloyd is, has waived demurrage and detention in LA Long Beach. Now, that's maybe because they understand see, that that it is that it is that it is unreasonable uh, to impose charges in in the situations in which there's such extreme congestion, um, and it's hard to distinguish between the the, the incentivizing part of demurrage and detention. Of course, there are people who keep containers too long, oh. and they should pay. Hmm. There are people who do not pick up cargo in a timely basis, hmm. and they should pay. Hmm. The challenge, of course, for the carriers and the ports is to distinguish between the two. And what Habag said is, hey, <laughs> we're going to waive it all for now. Yeah. And uh, and uh, one of my staff asked me, and he said, "Well, is that reasonable?" And I said, "Well, of course, mm. of course, that is a reasonable action under the circumstances." Okay. Not 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 many other not many other carriers have have followed that. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. But we're 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 working on that now in this in investigation, and um, um, we're also searching for a process that we could use uh, to, um, to, get, to get shippers money back in last year. Wow, okay. Um, again, in an, in an Australian context, so I keep bringing you back similar situations um, where we've had a lot of congestion. It's, it's slowly easing. Uh, we've had some main Good. lines uh, deploy some sweeper vessels. Um, but in the in the Pacific situation, we didn't have like what you described there with Hapag Lloyd, uh, although we called for uh, a waiver. Um, and shipping lines were very much treating each situation on a case by case scenario. But it was it was the onus was on you were basically shippers were guilty until proven innocent. Yes. Uh, that yes. Would receive these detention charges and then have to demonstrate a whole lot of evidence um, back to the shipping line that they made every attempt to de-hire. Um, now, and you know, in most cases they were able to achieve that, but just that administration alone, um, you know, was an unnecessary burden on, on the sector. Um, um, so again, what, what's your experience now with, what, with your oversight? We've heard what Happy Lloyd have done, um, but what's the what's the general treatment um, with the with the other line of shipping services? How do they manage the detention? It's it's there are extremes. Uh, there's one one carrier in particular um, who has called me often. You no, know, there's this situation, and what do you think about charges in, in a situation like this? And I'll talk through it with them. And they've been very, very conscientious to get with a new program. Mm. Others I have heard are not. But it is it is US law, right? So uh, there is there is no choice uh, except uh, to observe these. Re re reasonable practices and to have reasonable practices and regulations um, and as it, as outlined in the in the in the rule in the interpreted rule so uh, we will will move forward with the investigation 
um, we have um, served what um, what what we call a Section 15 information demand. Uh, it's not exactly like a subpoena, but it's but it's enforceable in the same way. And um, that um, we gave them a couple months to comply. Uh, so soon we 